Hi, it's Wednesday. It's three o'clock. Welcome to Together Unlocked, brought to you as always by Together 2012. We're a disabled-led arts organisation based in the main London 2012 host borough of Newham. I'm Ju Gosling, also known as the artist Ju90. I'm artistic director of Together 2012. And with me in my East London studio for the duration indeed is our chair, the artist Julie Newman. I'm just going to start with a bit of audio description. I have red hennaed very short hair in a self-inflicted corona crop. I've got black plastic glasses, black wrist braces, silver coloured jewellery at least, um, an orange watch and a white t-shirt that says we can change the world and um, we'd certainly like to see a changed world. Julie, what do you look like? I've been um, groomed so I look a little bit strange today, a little bit different. Um, I've got my hair swept over in a sort of Josh crop, uh, <laughs> uh, sort of like in the we'll in come the, on to that in the best Josh tradition. Of, it's blonde, it's blonde, um, but it might if you look closely, it might be uh, silver and gold. I've got dark rimmed glasses. I'm wearing a pewter talk, which is a sort of bracelet with little wolf's heads. I've got a brass pendant of two wolves howling at a moon, and I know that feeling very well at the moment. <laughs> sort of like as we move on through the week, um, I'm wearing a black T-shirt, and on it, it's, uh, it's, it's got a lovely little picture of um, a cat constellation looking at a shooting star. Um, and it's interesting because... When I thought about it, I thought we don't really seem to have a cat constellation. And we, we did. We always did historically. But it got changed over from a cat star to a dog star. Hmm, I wonder how that happened. Um, and yes, indeed, questions will have to be asked. Um, but when I thought about it again, I thought, well, we actually do have Leo, the constellation, of which... Um, Josh and I are both members. Uh, so we'll explain go. who Josh is in a minute. In fact, Josh is our missing host today. So on the other end of our virtual wheeled sofa in his West Midlands studio, we have some introductions, please. Well, good afternoon. Hi, yes, I am Robin Sergener. I'm business director at 2012 and the artist known as Angry Fish in my own right. Yes, we keep alluding to Joshua, who is not here, and we'll explain more about that in a few moments when asked. Uh, just to let you know a little bit about how I'm looking today, the week is transpiring to make me greyer by the day, or whiter, I'm not sure which. Uh, um, although I am clean-shaven, um, I have managed to re reacquaint uh, my pirate smile. For those of you who look closely, I had porcelain... I had some teeth work done and it was all finished except for the other side. And now it's only half finished on the other side, which makes no sense. But if I smile, you'll think, crikey, that man should be on a galleon. <laughs> so along with that smile and my no rimmed black armed glasses, um, I am also wearing a green round neck T-shirt Um which, uh, again, some of you will have seen this at least once before, um, but it is a T-shirt for the artist Billy Bragg, um, and it contains a, a, a line from one of his songs celebrating uh, his relationship being um, remembered by a new tattoo. So I'm not sure what that is saying from a societal perspective. <laughs> well, we were still laughing in the East London studio earlier about your self description for the audio description of having a boy band haircut. Without our host Josh, it's very much a grandparent time today. So if it was a boy band haircut, it was very much a boy band, I think from the 80s. And I'm saying that very nicely because I'm 58 and I'm older than Robin and Julie is in her 70s and we will just leave it at that. But Josh, as I understand it, is isolating today because one of the people where he teaches swimming tested positive. And of course, this gives us a great opportunity to remind people how important it is to follow those instructions. You may well feel that in your particular instance, 
you weren't really close enough for long enough or you didn't touch anything. It doesn't matter. Better safe than sorry. I know one of the things that's really led to a rise in the virus has been people not taking any notice of the isolation rules. So well done, Josh. We're going to be yes. forcing you back on the show from Friday using your phone. But we do think you need a period of time just to recover. So Julie has got to Josh's hairstyle today. I do. I do. In honour of. In honour of. And of course, being unashamed, Julie's a natural redhead. I'm an unnatural redhead. And Josh always describes himself as blonde, blonde. when it looks very, very ginger from London. So I, I, I do have to, uh, I do have to defend him in in sense that <laughs> actually, in 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 real light, it is much blonder. I mean, when he was a baby, it was quite clearly he had ginger hair, and his beard grows through ginger, but his hair is mostly blonde. Well, we would still welcome Tim to our club. <laughs> Wish to join. Um, and indeed, we will talk very soon about the Pop-Up Poetry Club. We're running this live stream as part of our Join In From Home programme. Uh, Join In From Home programme is running throughout the winter, at least until next spring. Um, and that's always been our plan. This is part of our digital year. So one of the things that we're doing is running a poetry group by telephone as part of our club's programme. We're going to put a video on at half past three that will tell you a little bit more about the club's programme and how you can join in from home. But the Pop-Up Poetry Club itself is now meeting by telephone. And Julie, you're just going to tell us a bit more about how that works before we move on to how it went today. Sure. I mean, what happens is that you let Noel, who is our engagement support worker, know that you want to join in advance. Um, and he will phone you anytime from quarter past 10 to half past 10. Um, and you will he will speak to you beforehand so that you know what's happening. But you'll hold on on the you'll hold on the line um, and then we all join together by 1030. The group is led by Alison Marchant, international artist, who um sets a theme per week. The first half is reading back poems of our choice. Uh, for some people, it's poems that we've written. Um, and for some people, it's poems that we've either found on the internet or in books. But bear in mind, not everybody has access to the internet or books. So it's really a matter of what works for the individual. Um, the once the poems are read, everybody has an opportunity to comment on the poems. Um, and that's actually quite useful because how it works is it focuses our attention on poetry and the act of, of writing poems. And um, it really helps to sort of stimulate that part of our brains. Um, then at, at, ten, at 11 o'clock, blah, 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 at 11 o'clock, we, we all hang up and have half an hour in which to hastily write a poem. Or I suppose if, you, if you're clever, you've done it before. I never do. It's always sort of like little flying fingers as I, as I type something up uh, after 11 o'clock. And then Noel phones us back, um, and we rejoin each other at 11.30, and we read out the poems that we've written. And again, there's a opportunity for everybody to pass comment on, on what we're reading. And that's always very positive comments, isn't it? It's, a, oh, it's very yes, much a supportive yes, yes, atmosphere yes. and part of our safer spaces policy. And of course, we can't supply the usual free tea, coffee and biscuits ourselves, but we encourage everybody to do that from home as well, don't we? So by the time Noel phones, we encourage people to have a nice cup of tea and a biscuit. And then it is almost exactly the same as it was in real life or... We must find an alternative word for that because, of course, the phone is as real as it gets. And we pay all of the costs of those calls. It doesn't cost you anything. So I'm putting something at the bottom of the screen at the moment. If you are interested in joining, it's info at together2012.org.uk. We also tell you the theme for next week. So if you want to just join in from home and send us your poem, that's entirely possible. So what's next week's theme before we look at this week, Julie? 
little panicked thinking. Um, <laughs> I think it's it's uh, who 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 am I? You know, and that can be what do I look like? How do I see myself? How do others see me? Um, you know, sort of characteristics or not characteristics, inner characteristics, outer characteristics, thoughts. <laughs> Okay, or you could keep it simpler than that. But this week's theme was rhythm, wasn't it? So I think if we start our poetry session with some of this morning's poems, would you feel good enough to read us yours first? Okie doke. I can do that. Um, shall I just say quickly before we start? Is that okay? Yes, of course. It was a really fantastic session again. I very much enjoyed it. But what I wanted to say was everybody participates as they wish, you know, in a way which is comfortable for them. So for some people, just taking part in the first half is what works for them. Um, and that's fine. We're very, very easygoing. We don't have a lot of rules and regulations that you have to follow. And there's no imperative, there's no pressure to write a poem if that's not either possible or, or particularly easy for you. Or, of course, if you want to write a poem but you don't want to read it to everybody else, you know, again, that's fine. What we used to do at East Ham and Stratford, that's a kind of alternative to real life at the moment is very much you know we would encourage each other to read our poems because it's nice to have an audience but it's also nice to be able to practice in front of people you know and although the group is expanding slowly you know hopefully people get to feel safe over time and I think actually it's really important not to read something out loud until you feel safe you know whatever that environment is or indeed if there's access reasons why you can't write something um, you know, I think we have to be mindful that, you know, not everybody is is able to write. But um, but I think it's also worth flagging up. We are hoping it won't be every week, but we are hoping also to start a Zoom based poetry group for people like me who cannot access voice calls. So that will be including people who are deaf, hard of hearing and have other cognitive issues. And that will be facilitated with live captioning. So we think that will be easier for some people to join in. What we do have the facility to do, however, is we do have volunteer scribes, don't we, that we can hook up by phone. So if, for example, you're visually impaired and you would rather dictate your poem, we can always hook you up with a volunteer who will just talk to you offline while the poetry group is being done. So it's very, very flexible. But we'll come back to have a more of a discussion about poems. But let's hear some first. OK, remember the uh, theme for this week is rhythm. Um, and my poem is uh, The Beat and the Beating. Beat, beat, beat goes the rhythm, the dance forgotten, the song unsung, the march of women now long gone. The rain dances down to a beat of its own, the sound of a drum echoes thrum, thrum, thrum. The beat of the feet heard loud on the street is a memory gone, a different song sung to a distant tune, left now relentless the sound of seasons change. Winds beating loud, creating a sound, echoes thrum, thrum, thrum. The beat of the sea, hard hitting the shore, tides come and they go, smashing backwards and fro, washing the stones then back to the deep. Fish flail and dive to sleep, the storm passes by, but the sound of the waves echo, rush, rush, rush. Well, cool. once again, I think Robin and I are blown away by that. We're just really glad that you're the director who's joining in and supporting the poetry group. We get to hear your poems because I don't think you'd had time to write for quite a long time. That's the other thing that I personally have found about being part of the Pop-Up Poetry Club at the point when I could access it and am you know, motivated to access it again. In a, in a week, we often don't think to sit down and just spend some time being creative. There's always something more to do. And if you're suddenly forced to sit down and write a poem on that topic, it's just so helpful. I realised after being with the club for a couple of years that I had this huge book of poems on all sorts of different subjects that I wouldn't even have thought to write about. So... Yeah, I would thoroughly recommend it. You know, if you're, for example, quite an experienced poet, but you just would like to meet other poets or you'd like to have that discipline, it really is a great club. 
Robin, I think you're going to read another of Duncan Bridgestock's poems, who's been sending us poems. And I read, yeah, well, we're hoping very much that in the not too distant future, more poets will be reading their poems for themselves. But in the meantime, can I ask you to be Duncan, please? Indeed, you can. And, and uh, thank you, Duncan, for your message of thank you. I'm enjoying very much enjoying reading your poems and, and hope that I get the flavours right. So this week's poem on um, under the guise of rhythm is called Metronome Syndrome. Tip, top, tap, tip, top, tap to the beat. Choo to dit, choo to dit, choo to dit. We're off. Don't scoff. Disco dance music is at the same tempo as your heartbeat rate. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Hit me, hit me. Rhythm is as personal as the way you walk, the way you talk. Everybody got rhythm, except the man who ain't got no rhythm. Rhythm is all around us, in the trees, in the bees. Rhythm is in your poem. That will show them. Brilliant. Thank you, Robin and Duncan. Um, this definitely won't be read as well as Pisa Malik would read it. Pisa is a member of our drama company, Act Up Newham, and um, has, okay, you know, when she has time, has been recording some just stunning poems for us. But this is called Life is Full of Rhythm. All our movements are often repetitive, with standard phrase, either negative or positive. One finds it boring, others said it's creative because the repetition is rhythmic, sweet to enjoy and follow the mimic. Most rhythms are full of sound and it goes round and round as though accurately in measured space, always very pleasant and full of grace. Beautiful to see as the waves hit the sandy shores, full of anxiety when the hunters run after the wild boars. Every movement is like a revolution, it recycles at its pace and motion, depending on the objects you have in mind. Our footsteps, breathing and clapping of hands, walking, marching, inhale, exhale, cutting and chopping, the sounds and rhythms according to what we are doing. Brushing the floor, shrews, shrews, dipping onions into hot frying pan, shoo, shoo, whisking the eggs, click, click, Dancing with anklets, ching, ching. Banging your ban bangles, cling, cling. Humming and singing, la, la, la. Whistling and laughing, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Thank you, Paisa. And um, we very much hope to hear you reading your own work again soon. So, Julie, you have one from our volunteer, Taylor Henville. Absolutely. Um and it's called Leaving the City. On the tube hurtling through, have to change over soon. Check the map, mind the gap, push through the crowd that roars so loud, up the stairs to the open air. Look at the departure board, hear the busker's strike accord. Get on the train, come wind or rain. We go on our way, out of the city for the day. Oh, that was great. Thank you, Julie. And thank you, Taylor. Yeah. So I think you have Dawn Barber's poem next, Robin. In, indeed I do. And I, uh, whilst I might sound slightly like Duncan, I don't know, but I'm definitely not going to try and sound like Dawn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, hi Dawn. Uh, this is your poem, The Story of Rhythm. Drip, drip, drip goes the tap. Boom, boom goes the drum. Rhythm, that's how it goes. Can we have some more, please? The beats, the tap of your feet as you walk down the street. The rhythm of the instruments playing the story. La, 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 boom, boom, boom. Yes, this is what it's all about. Rhythm. Brilliant. Thank you, Dawn. And Dawn is one of our participants who has a landline and no digital access as yet. So I think that's just an illustration of how successful the poetry group's been in bringing people back in. It took us months to get this group started, didn't it? It just says something mm -hmm. about technology that five years ago, it would have been taken us five minutes to get a contract like this. 
And as it was, we eventually had to get a company to build our own system to do a conference calling. How times have changed. I have one more poem, but I'm going to keep it another five or ten minutes because it relates to our Join In From Home programme rather than this morning's pop-up poetry club. So, Julie, I know you wanted to take advantage of having a little bit of time to have a chat about poetry today. Thank you. Yeah, I, I do. It's uh, quite important, I think, to to let people know just how much fun it is. You know, sort of it's uh, we have a theme, and generally people follow the theme, but sometimes they don't, and that's okay. Uh, what is interesting to me is how everybody's so different and I was thinking about it earlier on and it's a bit like being in an orchestra where you've got so many different sounds coming in from so many different places um, but yet it, it blends together and it, it creates something you know like a little symphony and that's what I that's how I find the poetry club you know we've got we've got all sorts of different sounds coming in all sorts of different perspectives and in reality, it should clash, but it just doesn't because everybody is sort of following the same tune. You know, whether it's the same theme doesn't really matter, but we've, we're following the same tune. We're, we're all singing the same song, albeit different verses in different voices and using different instruments. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It's a lovely thing to take part in and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Because I don't think you've ever attended our pop-up poetry club when it was in a building. I used to lead it sometimes before Alison came into post. Um, and I always found that quite interesting. But as a, as a workshop leader, I, I tended not to write the poetry because I didn't want people to feel that I was in competition in any way. Um, I think now times have moved on and the group, the, the group who have been working together for quite a long time, even the newcomers coming in, have got sufficient confidence in their own skills and their competences that they, they I don't think it matters now whether I write or don't write. Well, I think it's really important that you do, for anybody who's relatively new to us, Everything we do is free. Um, everything is led by disabled artists. Our outreach programme, which we run year round and describe as our clubs programme, which we'll tell you a bit more around 3.30, is targeted at disabled people and whoever they want to bring with them or need to bring with them for support. Our artistic programme is aimed at absolutely everybody and so is our Join In From Home programme. But the Pop-Up Poetry Club, when we say it's for disabled people, we mean all disabled people and we're certainly not interested in bits of paper. It's about how you see yourself. And we're very, and in that, we're very much a social model of disability organisation. There is nothing wrong with us. The problems we face are the way society is organised. So our clubs include people with learning difficulties, people with mental health difficulties, people with physical conditions, people with long-term health conditions, people who are deaf, people who are hard of hearing. Everybody comes together, very different levels. And what we believe very, very strongly is everybody has something to teach and everybody has something to learn. Mm -hmm. And if you stay awake, you will kind of pick that up for yourself. So the clubs always have a mixture of people, not just from different impairment groups, different cultural groups and different age groups, but people who are at different points in their career. So there are always professional artists involved in the clubs, but it's not what's important. What's important is that we're together and we're doing things inclusively and accessibly. Sorry, Robin, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I just to, to kind of pick up on what Julia was saying, and I think what what is most important is that um, you can't do it wrong. That's There's true. not a, you know, most of us did English at school and you, you were being told that this was wrong and that was wrong or you interpreted it wrong or how can you write it that way? That's not what we're about. It is absolutely about people discovering their own ability to just put words together on a subject. Um, you know, and, and some people have more confidence than others. Some people write things that 
everybody loves some people write things that only they love it doesn't actually matter um you know and, and i think the re that what you were saying is really important is that you know it's not trying to uh be as good as the professional who happens to be running it you know they're simply there to act as as a support for those people for anyone who's in the group to do something that they should really really enjoy and it doesn't you know and it, yeah sorry and it's just you know i just think that point is so so important it is about you and what you say and you can't say something about yourself or your own feelings that is wrong and I think it's also important to remember for professionals, particularly people who, if you like, have become disabled later in life, you know, having that ability to work in a really supportive atmosphere, to focus on our own work is also important. There isn't an us and them. It's yeah. always everybody together. And that has been, well, it's, it's very much central to what we believe. We also, we cover all sorts of art forms behind us, as I should have said in the audio description, you can see a little bit of our graffiti banner, which says Together 2012, and has pictures of all the different activities that we cover. That includes carnival art, street art, drama, live music, poetry and spoken word, visual arts, craft and more. So again, on a Friday, we would usually be running a painting and drawing session. And I hope to have some news very, very soon about how we're going to take that onto Zoom from October. But again, it's always about people finding their own voice. You know, it's about, and everybody does. It's, we offer a big range of art materials that people can experiment with and an optional still life, but it's all about you. And that's the secret. You can only be the best you you can be and the most creative you you can be. You can't be somebody else. And if you find out who you are, I think that's really important to everything. The yeah. other thing I think important to stress with the poetry is you don't have to be literate. You know, we can always find somebody to scribe for you. If you can't see, we can always find somebody to read the poem for you. That's even easier to do by telephone than it is in a in a physical building. So we can always facilitate those things. And a number of our regulars have come on a very long journey, haven't they? Mm. You know, from having very, very little literacy to now being very very confident performers so it's not about where you start it's about where you journey and um, where you go to on that journey did you have something that you wanted to add about that julie um it's difficult to know really it, i i say i think for me i just love it i i, I really enjoy everybody's contribution but i also enjoy learning new things myself so Alison leads a group uh, and sets a theme but she's very very careful in in that theme she's very careful to explain things she's very careful to guide people through if they need a one-to-one -one, uh, telephone conversation to talk it through a little bit more then Alison or Noel in fact are on hand to do so and that that has actually helped particularly one member of the group who has a little tendency to, to go wandering off onto a very similar sort of circuit. Today he broke out and, and did something completely different and that's because of the support. Yes, and finally, if you're listening to this thinking, well, I'm severely dyslexic, so is Anna Sudden, and she didn't used to think she could write poetry either, but now she's very competently leading the club. As we say, it's all about making it accessible and making it inclusive. I'm going to put on the video about how you can join in from home. And that includes writing a poem on the theme of Together. We're going to publish an anthology in November and everybody who contributes will get a physical copy of the book. You'll hear more about that in a minute. But first, I have a poem from our very own Sahira Khan. Sahira is an actor and TV presenter who grew up in Newham and lives close now. She usually sends us sign poems. So she sent me this one to read because it's a text poem. And it's called Why Together? Why together is important. Do you understand what together is? Together. 
no need to answer but together is one community together to support each other to care for each other to avoid fighting and war to avoid politics and injustice do you get it together peace love and freedom to be happy laugh and relax together is one community together forever together thank you sahira and i'm going to put the film on next together 2012 is running a join in from home program from our website together2012.org.uk click on the link at the top of the page join in from home to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. All of our activities can be enjoyed by families at home, but we also have some of our favourite activities here from our family activity days, which we usually hold in the school holidays. Card making with pens, stickers and paper is also popular. You can show someone you're thinking of them by making them a special card, and if it can't be delivered safely, then send it with a send a photograph with a personal message or keep it till later. Here we have instructions for making a sock puppet, a storage jar or night light or a lunchbox or storage box, all of which are really popular with our family activity days. And you can click on each of these links to get full instructions. So with the sock puppet, for example, you have lots of instructions with photographs to show you exactly what to do. Same with the storage jar. And same with the lunch box or storage box. And you can see how effective it is just to use very, very simple techniques. Everyone is completely unique. The Pop-Up Poetry Club meets on a Wednesday morning. We also run regular poetry projects and poetry cafes. We're inviting you to write or sign a poem on the theme of Together and send it to us to share on social media. We're also going to be publishing an anthology of the Together poems in November and everybody who contributes will get a copy of the physical book. So that is our Join In From Home programme. And we're going to move on first to our Virtual Nature Watch. For regular viewers, Virtual Nature Watch started in lockdown and um, unfortunately has continued because nothing much has changed apart from to go backwards. Yes, Robin, we will be coming to the Paralympics in a minute. But first, we are going over to Virtual Nature Watch. This week, yet again, we have Steriplurge's assistance dog, Merlot. Great. For many months, our virtual nature watch was confined to sending Julie's dog, Precious, out into the backyard to report back. The yard being so tiny that because of social distancing, we can't even go outside safely ourselves. And poor old Stara, Hannah and Merlo were in a worse situation because they were in a flat with a balcony and couldn't go out at all. They've managed to decamp to somewhere literally in the middle of nowhere. They're living in a barn and we're enjoying watching or learning about the surroundings in what I believe these days is also known as a bit of slow television. Um, in terms of audio description, Julie, will you do the honours? There's a path with bushes on each side, very green. There's a dog's head popping up every so often. Um, the camera's moving at some considerable speed, actually. Uh, and it's 
pausing, the dog is pausing, looking over into the field, um, carrying on in a straight line down the path with the weeds and the greenery on each side. There's some trees in the distance. Whoosh goes a, a, a bush of some description. I think there might be another one in a minute. No, no, we've managed to avoid it. Turning round, looking, looking back, looking back into the fields as well, looking at the bit of bush that probably hit him in the face. Uh, little Merlot carries on. You can see more of his head now and his collar. Uh, he's coming through the path past all the, the the weeds there's a bit of rye that we've just passed and he's coming up to a tree which is looking very beautiful against the horizon it's, blue sky, isn't it? it's not a blue sky it's a sort of dark blue sky and more sort of indigo i would call it um i don't know if that's the camera or whether it's actually perhaps quite a dark sky um there's some more trees in the in the far background um but we're going past the the grasses and yes, there's another tree as well. There's, so there was a double tree disguised as one. Um, Merlot carries on um, in quite a determined way. And not quite so. Oh, yes, he's speeding up again. Uh, and here we go. He's looking around. Oh, yes, there's, there's his people. Hello, people. And then he stops. Yes, that was terribly sweet, actually, wasn't it? You know, he looked oh, around a couple yes. of times to make sure Stera and Hannah were behind him. I don't think Stera can possibly walk as fast as Merlo no, can run. No, no. And I'm um, stopped at the end for them. They're using a very cheap little sports camera on a dog harness, aren't they? And I believe you said you can buy those for about £30. The camera with a mic microphone uh, attached to it comes to just over... 32 33 pounds the harness is just under 20 so the whole kit is about 50 quid which is a lot cheaper than these professional gopro of course there are other sports cameras available but yeah they, they can be jolly expensive can't they well they can and although the harness is more comfortable for the dog i have to say the harness for my dog because my dog's about a quarter of the size of merlot was quite a lot cheaper than 20 quid Otherwise, I probably would have just tied it onto the dog. But, um, <laughs> but then I'm in charge of our cash flow, which has always been miraculously good, but you can't be too careful. So this brings us on, Robin, finally, to our Clockwork Paralympics. Our Clockwork Paralympics are a regular feature. We started them back in April on the grounds that everybody was missing a bit of competition and a bit of sport. Robin is a Paralympian and we've already established over the last few months that the Surgeoners are probably, they say definitely, the most competitive family in the UK. So each week we race two clockwork toys. They usually do a Paralympic sprint, London 2012 against Birmingham 2022. And whoever wins their teddy bear has the right to wear a gold medal for the next week. We swap our competitors around, although of course you will be seeing them more and more often as the winter goes past. The surgeoners haven't quite grasped the point of the international bear hunt, which we are also taking part in, which is why our teddy bears are the competitors. But we'll keep explaining it to them. In the meantime, our teddy bear and this week's entrance as well into the bear hunt. For anybody who hasn't heard about the bear hunt, it was started at the beginning of lockdown for children. You put teddy bears in your window so that when they're getting their exercise, they're able to bear hunt. And for young people who aren't going out or anybody who just wants to be bear hunting on video and TV, you put bears in your social media and other things. This bear hasn't competed before. This is Pink Ted. And Pink Ted is He's grubby. He's more like brown Ted. Pink Ted <laughs> is 58 years old and was... Are you sure he's not blonde? No, he could be blonde. Good morning. <laughs> he's my original Teddy. For anybody who'd like to ignore the rest of them, he's in very good condition for his age. And he was a sort of pink, fluffy bear. He's not very fluffy now. Or um, pink. 
with white ears and a white nose. He's only had one eye for a very long time, so I find this disablest criticism absolutely <laughs> Robin, explain your trans species bear that's completing this square. Okay, okay, well, in our defense on the teddy bear, um, variety of teddy bears, is that we've grown up buying non-traditional teddy bears and so whilst we do have some we have many more kind of contemporary tv show type creatures so today but we have wenlock today um who is the uh cyclops kind of um uh mascot from the london paralympics um but to make things fair he is riding whiz who is only a very small hamster so we're actually trying to give the pink teddy a chance this week. <laughs> I kind of feel, I mean, you know, we were cheering Michael Rosen on and we were very pleased he got home, but I'm getting to the point where we're going to have to contact Sir Michael Rosen and say, these are not teddies, Robin. I have a Paralympic. I could practically reach it. I have a Cyclops, but I also have teddies. However, <laughs> I will excuse you on the grounds that this is a gay household. And so this yours is, isn't. This is species fluid, though, do you? No, this is, it is not species fluid. This is pink Ted for the proper bear hunts. But I remember 20, 25 years ago when I came out as gay, I put all my teddy bears away for about five minutes and then I realised it was just one of those things that made me gay because everybody else had got a collection too. You should see Julie's toy collection back at home. So I'm quite sure we do have more teddy bears here, even though we've only got half of them. But without further ado, would you like to be the competitor on the, my, from my right hand or my left hand? Because what we do, you'll be pleased to know, is we pre-record the race in the morning and then the surgeoners make a choice. Today's okay. competitors are clockwork caterpillars. Oh, Okay. I'm going to go with the one you release from your left hand, which will be on the right of the screen as we're watching. Okie doke. Let me put Are this sure? on and then I'm going to get Robin to do a bit of <laughs> audio description. It's a slower race than when we have the clockwork dogs and things, but it's still quite quick, I think. Okay, so we're lining up. We have a green caterpillar and an orange caterpillar. And uh, they're zooming up the hallway. Um, I say zooming. Um, that might be a literal, li literally not the right description. I don't know what the opposite of zooming is, but it's incredibly slow. And had I known the colour selection, I would have chosen green. But I didn't ask because then I would have, have perhaps chosen knowingly. So at this moment, I can't tell. It looks to me like the green could be in the lead. Um, but until we actually get to the stop point, I can still hear them going. It sounds to me like this could, I mean, there could be a late charge from the orange one. Which one's still going, Ju? Do we know? Oh, oh, oh. Ju, you didn't win. Oh, yes, the green ones have won. Yes. So congratulations to the London team. Um, Yay. And, and uh, okay. thankfully, um, I don't have to make excuses for... Uh, this but jo lot josh just reminded me from text because he is watching from his isolation that in fact wenlock is from the olympics not the paralympics apparently i thought it was the other way around but there you go i think it's very confusing that's all i can say well we only have one gold medal in this house judy you do the honors it is a plastic medal in fact let me just see what does it say i keep saying it's from the mayor of newham it says newham celebrates 2012 brought to you by the mayor of newham well the medal was anyway i think the rest of it was brought by the olympic delivery authority in london 2012 but um but as we don't have any other medals of any kind this is the medal for the teddy everybody got one <laughs> Man mandeville was the paralympic teddy That's right, yes so joshua is taking part even whilst he's not here well, that's great because this brings us on to our gaming and virtual sports section. 
Julie, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but I can almost not see you on the camera at all now. So I'm trying to leave the leave it's pink Ted. Ted. Pink Ted will be fine. We'll sort it out. I just want to make sure we can see the medal. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a better view of the teddy wearing the medal? I think it's, a, it's the first time in 58 years that Pink Ted has had a medal, that is for sure. Very sad. So Josh usually does our sport and gaming report. We've introduced those reports, well, for several reasons, actually. The fact is there's lots of creative careers associated with sport. There's many, many creative careers and jobs for artists in gaming. We also like the theatre of it all, the spectacle. And of course, at the moment, it's always good to have things to do where you don't have to leave the house. And that has become even more important this week. So I'm hoping that Josh has passed over his report. But in any case, Paralympian Robin Surgeon at MBE, I'm quite sure you can tell us what's going on. I also had a question, which is I see that the the kind of plans to open stadiums have been paused. So it would be great to hear a little bit more mm. about that. If we have time, then I think it would be well, not nice because it's not a nice thing to discuss. But there seems to be news this week about the lasting impact on local authority sports centres and yeah, and swimming pools and things and how many are going to survive. We know how important those centres are to disabled people and particularly swimming pools because it's such an accessible sport. So that's quite a lot for you to deal with. Um, but maybe we'll do a bit more sport and a bit less gaming this week. OK, well, on, to that end, then I'll, I'll start with gaming. So actually, this Josh has sent me the gaming stuff and I've whatever sport you can blame me for. Um, so so there, there is one really big piece of gaming news um this week which is that um xbox obviously which is part of microsoft but xbox um the the, the brand um have spent seven and a half billion dollars buying a games company called bethesda um and they've they've bought them kind of lock stock and barrel so all the creatives and everything are you know they're coming as a as, a, as an entity under the banner of Xbox, um, but they are that they they and I said to Joshua, who's Bethesda, because you know I'm I'm games illiterate, um, and they are they are one of the biggest games makers, and they are there are there's a series of games called the Elder Elder Scrolls, um, which in calls includes a game called Skyrim or Scrim as I call it, much to Joshua's annoyance. It's definitely written as Scrim. <laughs> um, and and where's it got? Oh, for, a game called Fallout and a game called Doom. Doom's been around for quite a long time because Doom existed yeah. as a PC game. That's the first thing you've mentioned that makes any sense to me. But of course, we are still those games novices. Yeah, but but I mean, it was saying that the Elder Scrolls series in themselves have sold over sixty million copies. Um, you know, and and the Fallout series as further further thirty eight million. So it is a big acquisition, um, and and I guess so. That's going to Xbox are going to be focusing quite a lot on the kind of games that that company produce. Yes, which I suspect also means they're not going to come down in price anytime soon. We will move on from gaming probably in a minute, but we rest assured if you're new to the show, we talk a lot about free games, phone games, but of course. Thanks. Those of us who've been lucky enough, rather than following the government advice to go on holiday, have invested in games consoles instead. We are not on an Xbox. We're on a slightly cheaper console, but not massively. And um, I guess we'll be reporting on our progress over the winter. Or maybe lack of progress. <laughs> I, I think it's partly finding the right things that we want to do with it. But more about that next week, because I think this news about pausing stadiums and so on is a really big one, isn't it? It is. I mean, I've got two pieces of news and I've, I've deliberately chosen Paralympic ones. And the second one will kind of lead into it. Um, the first one, which I thought was really interesting, considering our perspective on on togetherness and community and all the rest of it, is that um, Procter and Gamble. Um, I'm sure there are other pharmaceutical com washing up companies out there, um, but they are a major sponsor of the IPC, the International Paralympic Committee. 
um, and they have announced that they are giving away um, 52 $10,000 grants to athletes who are have either already qualified or are, tr are likely to qualify for the 2020 Paralympics um, to, to, to spend that money. To, and they've, the athletes have got to come up with ideas about how they would spend that money in their own community. Um, which I thought was, you know, really fantastic. I mean, that's quite a lot of money when you add it all together as well. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think we started on half of the collection of a Lent collection by the local Bow Church, which was not a huge amount of money. It was about £120. But, you know, these things really, really blossom. And what I think is so great is those athletes have been left with an extra year. And to be able to spend that time as they're, you know, probably had a lot more time to observe their local community because of the sort of reduction in training and the home-based training. So, yeah, I, th I think that's great. And what's the second piece of news? Um, well, the second piece of news is that, subject to it not now changing, is that, um, you know, Josh and I, as you know, come from the swimming fraternity or swimming family, I should say. Um, and... Uh, World Para Swimming has its own series. Um, it's a series of international events held in Berlin, Italy, Australia, London, Brazil, and somewhere in the States. No, I don't know if it's always the same thing. Um, oh, it's the same place, sorry. But they are that they they have brought. They it was supposed to start in June in Berlin. They've now put dates to run it in October in Berlin, um, with the closing date for entries is monday of next week um i mean it's a very high high level entry competition but it, it is an international event that is certainly at the moment still happening um but i i kind of quickly looked underneath it about what what it meant and taking part will be um dependent on what any given home country's um, you know, travel restrictions um, and, and quarantining rules are. Um, what it doesn't say, though, is whether there is a spectator part of it, um, which would be very sad. But I mean, it's, it's, the, it's been held within the, third, the 34th German International Para Swimming Competition. So it, it being part of the World Series is a new um, element to to this competition but bringing that right through to what we were talking about yes I was I mean so lots and lots of organizations have been doing you know huge amounts of work and spending um, monies that they don't necessarily have to be ready to welcome back uh, socially distanced crowds um, or audiences to sporting events um, um, literally with the, the you know with the uh, Boris Johnson's announcements yesterday, that is now null and void, or at least for the time being. Um, and it's so difficult because some of the, you know, there, there are, I, I was listening to a chap on this morning who was talking about, um, you know, they're, they're a non-league football club and they're not funded as such. You know, they're running off, you know, get, you know, money that they raise and maybe some local sponsorships or whatever. And they kind of put all this in. And now they've been told, well, they can't do anything with it. And there's then they've, they've got no way of getting any return on their investments. And I think it's really sad because it does mean that, you know, what we are going to see, I mean, at the moment, the, the the bigger level, you know, your premiership football or your league football is still going to be happening. Um, obviously, Formula One is still going on. But I think for just like for us, for artists, for those people who aren't in, you know, high level paying um, or high revenue kind of areas of, of of delivery, whether that's sport or the arts, it's just getting harder again. And I think that what we what we've got to do, I think you know what we're doing as a show, um, and what we can to continue to to send out is that kind of that motivation. That bit will try to be creative. I mean, I know at the moment you know kind of suddenly being told that we may have to sit with these current restrictions until March of next year. Um, and if we do, we do, if it actually makes the difference, you know, I mean, it all seems, you know, listening to other things about the arbitrariness of, oh, 
closing pubs at 10 o'clock well why does that help why why is that different to allowing 300 people to a football match or whatever it is you know it seems very little science to back it up but well i kind of think when they say that yeah speaking as somebody who used to work on a lot of late night events um in my younger days it's because they get more and more uncontrolled <laughs> <laughs> I was going through all my different words, thinking which right. word is suitable to speak on air. But yes, it is just a fact that every half an hour after 10 o'clock, they get more and more difficult to deal with. And if you work on the kind of events that don't start till 11 o'clock, whoopee doo However, that does mean a huge number of artists connected to nightclubs who were hoping that at least things could take place in socially distanced eating areas and so on of those clubs are just facing like you say a very very difficult winter and of course that is something we will continue to report on I should say at this point thank you so much again if you're a lottery player it's the national lottery and most recently City Bridge Trust that is allowing us to present this join in from home program did you have anything you wanted to add around gaming and sport, Julie? Um, no, I, I, I look forward to this session every week and thank you for reporting and for Josh for doing the research because it's always interesting to know what's going on. Um, so, yeah, thank you. And, and hopefully, you know, Josh, stay safe and be back with us as soon as you can. And I, I'm going to say, I mean, we, we, we haven't done app date um, for as, as an official slot today um but but actually it, the the relevance of that to joshua um finding out that somebody it w was was positive and therefore being able to make you know suitable actions or re reactions to it although it wasn't within you know the the, the nhs covid um program uh it, it's still a very small an individual version of that system i.e where he's been training they keep records they know who's been there so therefore anyone who was at that session where someone has subsequently tested positive from they've then been able to take that information and give it you know and, and let everybody know and I, and I just think that if we if you know that's just a demonstration of, of uh, how effective it can be, even at that kind of very small club level. So if we can make this app work at a, a, a national come international level, then we can make, you know, it can be fantastic. Yeah, and that is a really good intro into us saying, yes, we have been running a, an app date feature since the middle of August, I think, mm. when it was announced that Newham had the honour of hosting the trial for the NHS COVID-19 app. The trial finished last Friday. I had a chat with the team on Monday. The app is being released tomorrow. So make sure you've got your phone operating system up to date. Just go to your app store, whether you're on Apple or Google, download the NHS COVID-19 app and it's very very easy and straightforward to install and use. Just one thing to add, it was reported today from Germany that they have a very very good app and a lot of people are using it but what people aren't doing is using the app to report that they've had a positive test and so therefore it's not contacting people. So I think that's just really important, you know, download the app, check the app regularly, use it if you think you've got symptoms to check your symptoms, use it to book a test. But if you test positive, however that's happened, you know, it might be something you've done at work or at a leisure centre, anything, make sure that you tell the app because the way it works is completely anonymous. It's only your phone that knows where you've been. So unless a ping is sent to your phone to tell it to notify your contacts, it's not going to know. You know, that's the downside of it. So, um, yes, install it, but please do use it. So coming up on Friday, we have usual items. We have something for the weekend where we recommend things for you to do online and offline while staying at home. 
we have dressing up to go out to stay in more relevant than ever where you dress up to go out but you're actually staying in but you send us a photo or a video it could be for something real or it could be something imaginary we have been struggling to find outfits but we're just going to have to keep on trying because we've got at least another six months of dressing up to go out to well stay in we'll also be focusing as always on friday on visual arts and there will be much much more so we really hope to see you then if you're interested in anything you've heard about today we have a highlights and links page under our main together unlocked tv on the website and you can find those videos and links if you're watching on YouTube, we also have live captions running if you watch via the website. And the recording of this show will be uploaded this evening along with those captions. So if you want to watch it with captions or you know somebody else who wants to watch it with captions, wait till tomorrow when the captions are processed and you should have a fully accessible version of this show available so i'd just like to say a big thank you to all of you for watching happy isolation josh we look forward to seeing you soon stay home stay creative and stay well